Hey everyone, this is John Buck. I'm back with another array signal processing video. Uh, in this video today, I'm going to talk about array gain, or more precisely, array gain against white noise, which is one of the important metrics uh, for describing the performance of a beamformer, that we'll look at different beamformers and compare this as one of the performance measures to see how well they're acting. Uh, and to do that, it's again a good chance to review and refresh. Remember, we, we've talked several times in this class, there are two important reasons that you can uh, are, are two important advantages of using an array instead of a single sensor. So I want you to pause the video for a second and, and refresh your memory. What are the two reasons that are advantages that we have in using an array over a single sensor? And when we come back, we'll talk about it. Okay, and, and so switching over to the whiteboard here, the two advantages we get in array signal processing by combining a, a, an array of sensors instead of working from a single sensor is that we get spatial filtering of signals and we get attenuation of background noise. All right, spatial filtering, we've talked a lot about this as creating constructive interference for desired signals or desired directions. So we get constructive interference of signals from the desired direction. And destructive interference in the other direction. And today is the first time we're going to really start focusing on this part. Array, array gain against white noise is about attenuation of background noise. And the heart of the att heart of attenuation against background noise, this is about essentially by combining the senses, we are averaging incoherent or uncorrelated, maybe it's better to say uncorrelated random noise. And when we do that, when we average uncorrelated random noise, it reduces the variance, which is the power of the noise. So that by combining these sensors, the uncorrelated noise that is observed in all of them is reduced in its power, leaving us hopefully stronger, uh, better unchanged versions of the signal and better SNR. Okay, so that's the big picture. And so today is the first time again, it's, it's worth reiterating in, in the class that we, we've mentioned this point to several times, but now is the first time we're really going to look at it in detail. And to do that, we're going to, to think about the cases we always do, the standard linear array, where I have n sensors spaced every half wavelength and an arrow band signal, and then my observed data vector, these x, these, were, these are the complex phasors. Right, and they're going to contain two parts. This is, there's a uh, replica vector or manifold vector Vs for the signal scaled by some amplitude, A, which is we're going to assume this is random and unknown. So A is a complex random number. Uh, and we write it this way to say it's got a real and imaginary part. And we, we write it like this saying it's a complex Gaussian. And what we mean by that, if we unpack that, is that both the real and imaginary parts are zero mean Gaussians and they each have half the variance. So the real part has power sigma a squared over 2. The imaginary part is also a random variable chosen with variance sigma a squared over 2. And that these two also, it's important, are independent. And so when we look at our data, we have, this is the signal part, and it has a manifold vector that tells us where it's, you know, essentially where it's coming from, how it appears on the array and its structure. And then A is this unknown amplitude with some power. And then what's, again, new for today, for this time, we're going to talk about noise, where N is our, our complex normal noise again. So this is sort of a, a fancy CN for complex normal, as opposed to the script N for real normal. <clears throat> So complex normal vector of noise. So it's saying we have noise on each sensor that's zero mean. And then we say it, its variance is sigma n squared i, which is equivalent to saying that, that this, is, this is the shorthand way of saying that if the covariance matrix is diagonal and identical, it says that each sensor, each sensor's noise is uncorrelated. with equal power sigma n squared. Okay, so that's the idea, of, and this is what we call spatially white noise. And 
and then it's, it is uncorrelated from sensor to sensor. It's the simplest and most common uh, form of noise to analyze, so we'll start there. We will see some examples as we go further in the course of noises that are uh, not spatially white, that have correlation between the sensors. Uh, but this is our model. I just wanted it's because we're bringing in noise for the first time, take a little bit to break down what we mean by the different uh, notations. So again, these squiggles means that something is a random variable distributed according to, and this is our, our shorthand for, for uh, complex Gaussians, sometimes also called circular or proper Gaussians. You may have heard, heard that name too for when they're independent and the real and imaginary parts, when the real and imaginary parts are independent with equal variance. So our topic for today, array gain, or, or as I said at the start, sometimes more precisely, we say it's array gain against white noise. So we're assuming white noise, and that's often this W down here is often what says the white noise, is the ratio or the, the improvement of the SNR at the output of the beamformer to the SNR at the input of the beamformer. So the signal to noise ratio is our sort of basic signal processing, simple measure of quality. And, and SNR uh, at the input is, is based on, on the things we just talked about. We're going to see for a conventional beamformer what's the SNR at the output and, and how that all works out uh, in, in this case. So uh, let, let's start. And what we're going to do now is we're going to spend some time in this video uh, showing you the input SNR. And then we'll, we'll take a break and in the next video talk about the output SNR. Okay, so the uh, input SNR is the ratio of the signal energy and it, or the average signal energy to sensor to the noise energy. And so for any sensor, if we go back to the previous page, for any sensor with this replica vector, we're going to say with d equals lambda over 2, for the signal part, we say that the signal energy is the expected value of, of what we would see for any one sensor there. Because, it, well, because it's a plane wave, they all have the same amplitude, so we can just choose any one of them. More generally, you would average over all the array if your wavefront is not constant in amplitude. But because for a plane wave it is, we can just say that this is A times the exponential of... Uh, let me uh, take a second, actually rewrite this in... I can write it in exponential form, but it would be uh, E to the j uh, pi dnu for the nth element. And for complex things, when we want to take their, their magnet, we have to do this times its conjugate to get the power, to make it real. So we have e to the minus j pi dau n. Oh, I'm sorry, still this, the whole thing conjugated. And when I do that, when I take the conjugate inside, right, this becomes minus, and this becomes a conjugate. I multiply them together, and I'm left with the expected value of the magnitude of a squared because the e to the plus j something, e to the minus j something cancel out, leaving just the 1, which is, is sort of why we do these complex things when we do expected value of complex things with the conjugate. We know that the expected value of the magnitude of a complex number squared is the real squared plus the imaginary part squared. And now we can, can break that down. We know this is the expected value. This expected value of the sum is the sum of the expected values. And each of these was sigma a squared over 2. So the signal power, the average signal power at any sensor is sigma a squared. Using the same type of argument the, oh, for the noise part, is just going to be, well, all the sensors we said are the same with that idea of equal power and spatially white noise. So the expected value of the magnitude of n squared for any, for, for any sensor is equal to uh, sigma n squared. So putting those together, the first piece that I need, the sort of starting point, is that the SNR 
at the input of the beamformer, which is the average SNR at any sensor in the array is sigma a squared over sigma n squared. Not surprisingly, signal power over noise power. So that's what we get on average at the input. The question is, how much better do we make it by applying a beamformer, by applying a spatial filter? So I'm going to stop this part here and the second part, because it's a little more involved computation, we'll look at the uh, output SNR and then put those together to get the array gain.